When it comes to free will, there are a few anime out there that deal with the subject as closely as Psychopaths does. Sybil, one of the semi-antagonists of the franchise, is the very definition of a scientifically logic-based order literal system that takes control of the entire city the anime takes place in, as well as Japan and other countries that allow Sybil system to take root in. The reason that so many in the world are so accepting is because there is a certain danger to the concept of free will and freedom, which is the subject I'll be talking about today. Now, freedom is a double-edged sword. True freedom allows people to do things that harm others for their own gain, just as much as the freedom to perform actions that would help others around you. And with these options comes more peril in the thoughts of the masses, because the freedom to choose comes with a tidal wave of choices and paths you can take as a person. To start out with something a little more relatable, I'd like to take you on a trip with me down memory lane, as I remember what I felt in my high school life. That the closer I came to graduating, the closer that impending future I always thought I'd travel toward would be made a little clearer. I always thought I'd end up a doctor after going to medical school at the same college my father and his father went to. And that I would be starting up my own practice at a similar age. I thought I could meet the requirements, and my grades, while not perfect or even near the top of the schools, were good enough to do so. At least when I first started. In the end, though, I did none of these things. College proved that the way I breezed through high school wasn't the way true life really worked. I fell hard into this realization early on, and though I completed a few courses that would end up as electives on my transcript, I had to decide what else I wanted to do with my life since the path I thought I'd always go down was now closed to me, for a variety of reasons. Among these, the thought that I'm not someone who should be really trusted with somebody else's life. So I sat one day in college, bewildered by the sheer amount of choices there were in the world. I was paralyzed by the thought that I could do anything, and in that paralyzation I simply did nothing. It took several weeks for me to decide what to do, what they say in the shows and anime that I grew up on, follow your dreams. So that's what I did. I followed my dream of writing into an English degree. And I was good at it. I scored well and, above all, I liked it. But what you do with an English degree, or in my specific case, a rhetoric degree, is sit around and do nothing. Because an English degree is the kind of thing you take if you intend to become a teacher, or you just don't know what else to do in your life. It's an easy degree to attain, and I chose the path of least resistance without really challenging myself, which may very well have harmed my future prospects. Now, you may be wondering at this point what all this has to do with a dark anime like Psychopaths, and it's at this point that my story and that of Akane's meets in this concept. That I wish I'd been given a few options of career path that Sybil supplies by analyzing you and your entire life choices up to that point. Freedom of choice is paralyzing and can often lead you to a dead end. But being offered a few roads you know will lead to success based on scientific probability and logic, that supplies you with a much easier decision to come to. In Akane's case, she was given the choice of an MWPSB agent, according to her scores, and she felt aimless before that choice was laid before her. She decided that she could follow that trail and do the most good in the world, whereas if she had not been given that choice and instead floundered in the countless paths available like I did, it's likely in all possibility that she never would have joined the task force that led her to an even footing with and a check on the civil system's overlogical computations. Ironically, that freedom from that huge miasma of choice that presents itself to everyone is the most freeing feeling one can have, and one that especially makes the masses happier on a larger scale, as we can see in Psychopaths. A lot of people often feel lost in life, several times throughout their lives, because they don't understand what they want to do. They might change their major in college several times, and even after that they may have a dream they want to pursue but then have to bring it back down to reality to afford the basic necessities of life. So, being given a small list of options of what you'd be good at, and with the stability of a career stemming from those few choices, seems like a no-brainer, which is why the civil system works so well. Back in the old days of hunter-gatherer tribes, back even before we had jobs like we do now, there were only a few minor goals, to eat, to drink, shelter, and reproduction. Then we got more complicated, because we eased the burdens on those basic necessities, leaving us the option to focus on other things. And even just 100 years ago, it was easier to get a job, because you didn't need as much experience or schooling to get a good, stable income. 
Sure, there's outliers in every situation, as I've known people in my life who make a lot of money in jobs after dropping out of high school or college. But affording a place to stay and food to eat was much easier to do in the past, at least from what I've been told by my parents and what I've read of history. Now, there's so much choice and possibility and requirements and paths you can take that some people just feel overwhelmed from the very real failure that can result from a wrong choice. You can waste years of your life following a path you don't know will end well or not. And a lot of the time, it doesn't. And you can change from that path to another one until you find the right one, but by then all this time has just passed you by. And sometimes there are only ever dead ends. But with the civil system, most of these problems wouldn't exist. There wouldn't be any time wasted choosing incorrectly. You could devote yourself to a path with no question in your mind that it will end with you being successful, thanks to what your scores and personality mean to Sybil. Which is why the civil system is so unfortunately right in so many different cases, as Akane comes to find. Sybil understands humanity in a logical framework better than humanity understands itself. Humanity can become a beast that you have to leash before it gets out of control, consuming others and even itself in the end. And this is no more telling than the point of the movie, with this country rocked by civil war as it tries to resist the coming rigidity of the civil system. There's no one in any real control of the citizens, whereas Sybil would put those citizens to good use, developing the country into a better place, at least for Sybil. And any who don't follow through will be eliminated or locked up to remove their piece from the chessboard. A lot of problems with war-torn countries in our world is that young people just don't have anything to do or focus their attention on. They're just left there, uneducated or otherwise, around other people just like them, so they revert to how our ancestors used to act, which was with war, fighting over territory, resources, or just the pursuit of pleasure to excess. If they don't have a path given to them, or even just a small amount of options, they simply revert to animalistic behavior because it's easy to do without a code of ethics or laws. And this cycle is self-perpetuating, as the ones who are forced into their circumstances force others in turn to those same circumstances, until nothing is left but a broken country. And that's what Akane realizes when she finally comes upon Sybil, and the whole situation is explained to her. If this system in place doesn't exist, especially now that the entire city is so reliant on it, everything would just descend into chaos. And that's honestly kind of what Makashima's point of taking down Sybil was. That being to point out the hypocrisy whereby a group of people decide the course of many others for their own good. As if these few people are better equipped to deal with that huge, almost infinite amount of choice that everyone would be faced with individually otherwise. To Makashima, freedom of choice for every human is more important than the happiness created by, uh, to him, false sense of direction earned from Sybil that results from the masses freedom being taken away or at least narrowed down to a more manageable level for the average person. The freedom of choice is a huge responsibility, and honestly, not everyone is going to pick the right path for themselves or those around them, because with that responsibility comes not only consequences for the person choosing that path, but everyone around that path they affect by following it. This idea is similar to the butterfly effect, because every choice affects more than just the individual when we're in such close proximity as we are in the modern age. There's going to be people who kill intentionally, or even accidentally, as they continue down their path, or those who choose to take advantage of others for their own gain. It's so natural for humanity to do these things because these concepts have existed as long as we have, which is why laws were put into place by communities to avoid the harsh realities and supposedly enlighten us beyond our primal instincts. To Sybil, it's better to shoulder that responsibility from a more logical perspective, through the use of top brains of society to point life in a more scientific direction. To these brains, it's the only way to create a utopian society, by getting rid of those who would cause trouble in the system and only allow those who live within the acceptable limits to survive. The ends justify the means to Sybil, which makes the ability to kill a few people to make the most happy a logical choice to them. In absence of this control, Sybil sees only a society that is weak and will eventually fall to corruption or decay, as we can see when Makashima actually managed to bring Sybil down for a little bit. But on the other hand, and this is the kicker, Makashima is just as right as Sybil was. With the kinds of systems like Sybil, we lose the ability to choose paths that might make things better for the entire world. Geniuses in our society are often outcasts, just like Galileo being restricted from releasing his research that the sun is what the Earth orbits around 
instead of the other way around, like what was commonly believed at the time. Because it wasn't necessary information to furthering happiness according to the society in control. By the same token, though, freedom to pursue discoveries can lead to horrific atrocities, such as the bombs dropped on Japan near the end of World War II. Freedom has many risks, but sometimes those risks can pay off in huge ways, and the ability to choose is inherent in the way we as humanity continue to grow and evolve. If every person who didn't fit the constraints Sybil sets was eliminated or locked up, society would stagnate or even revert back to simpler times because so many things we have now aren't necessities for life to exist in a blissful state, which was one of the central points of the Matrix. Blissful ignorance is a hugely successful concept because it's so much easier than trying to rail against the machine or law and maybe get hurt or maybe even create something that makes everybody's lives better. But without freedom to choose, I wouldn't have come to this point where I could make videos for you guys to watch and be entertained by and question your choices and thoughts and actions and ideas. I would have probably been chained to some desk job because I'm good at repetitive tasks. And while I may have had a modicum of happiness from the stability of it all, I would honestly probably feel a little bit stifled regardless, and even end up one of those problems in society that Sybil sees fit to extricate from the populace. Though not to any extent like Makashima's, since I don't think I'm quite to his level of razor's edge between brilliance and madness. Even you wouldn't be watching all those YouTube videos you are now, with all those conflicting ideas and thoughts and actions. Creative work wouldn't exist because it's not always helpful in a meaningful capacity to such a logical system like Sybil. And in fact, those dissenting ideas I'm talking about can lead to rebellion as people begin to think for themselves rather than accepting the choices given to them, which can lead to both good and bad outcomes. In the end, both sides are technically right, because some control is needed to direct the future of our society toward a positive outcome. But too much and society begins to stagnate. Similarly, freedom to choose is needed because it course corrects its way into a more positive livelihood, but too much of that and we burn ourselves to ash. Moderation is the key to all of this, as it is in everything. No idea can be brought to its extreme and not harm something else. Only through bringing two ideas, or even multiple ideas, together in an amalgamation of human thought and destiny can we focus and open the way toward a brighter future. And that's where I think Akane stands at the end of it all. At least for now. She wants to keep that balance I'm talking about, but eventually does want to wean society off the Sybil system, or at least reduce its control to allow more choices and freedom of thinking than it currently allows. There's a balance in all things that needs to be found and stuck to, and the scales can't be pulled too far in one direction or the other, or things begin to fall off that metaphorical scale and make a damn mess all over our collective metaphorical floor. But really, I'm just a 25-year-old dude who thinks too much about anime. So who am I to say what's right for you or this whole global society we live in? My choices and thoughts are my own, as should yours be. Though I'd obviously prefer you to be on my side than somebody else's. Anyway, if you've got a suggestion or a thought of your own, leave those down in the comments below to share them. Or even make your own video, which I highly encourage. Because we always need those dissenting thoughts and even agreements with our ideas out in the world. It's how we all grow together as human beings, and don't let anyone else tell you not to share your opinions. Just realize that some opinions have consequences, just like I was saying about freedom. And if you want to contact me in other ways, you can hit me up on my Twitter, Tumblr, or Reddit account. But to close this whole philosophically dense video off, like I always say, as long as you're enjoying the way you watch anime, and the way you live your life, and you aren't harming anyone else, that's all that really matters. That's the beauty of choice. Just try not to do anything too harmful, yeah? I'll see you in the next one.